How does it sound when I talk from this distance? Say something again from that distance. Da 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 da. It's a little quiet. Maybe Let's I need see. to turn myself. Testing, testing. How does this sound? Am I coming in clearly? It is important that I come in clearly. Former adult film star Mia Khalifa, uh, no relation to Wiz Khalifa, and I have no idea if that's true. Uh, she went to a hockey game and got hit in the boob by a hockey puck that was going 80 miles an hour. And now she says one of her breast implants has been punctured. 80 miles an hour? She should be dead. I've always said this. Thank God for breast implants. Do you believe in miracles? She went on to say that one of her boobs is now deflated. Perfect. Now she can get a job with the Patriots. I did research and she looks to be about a Stanley Double D cup. I bet OnStar called. Uh, Miss Khalifa, our systems are showing that one of your airbags was deployed. Now don't panic. Help is on the way. She said she's going to wait till next year to get the breast implant fixed. Next year? I hope she's got a can of fix a flat. Elsa? Do you want to do some blow, man? Come on, let's snort some yay. Let's start with just a liner four, and then some more, till we can't feel our face. We used to be co buddies. And now we're not. I wish you would sniff some bites. Do you want to do some blow, man? It doesn't have to be some blow, man. Go away, Anna. Let's get high. I hate it here in my room alone. Those cocaine's coming out of my hands. And Dad proposed. Nobody can Wanna do some blow, man? I just did like a holy ball. You know, I also bought some acid too. Dropped a tab at noon and now I'm tripping balls. Ah! Let's watch my little pony eat a bag of shrooms and watch the hours tick by. Tick tock, tick tock. Why are there so many fucking clocks? It's like a cold play song. I don't like it. I don't want these cocaine ends anymore, Dad. Sorority bitches want too much of it. Don't touch me! I'm a child. How come mom doesn't talk? Bitch, get away from my room! I'm really lonely. I have no friends. Fuck you. Oh, bitch, now what's my name? And then their family got on this big boat, and they was in that theme from a perfect storm where the daddy was George Clooney, and the ocean like, yum, George Clooney's tasty. Mm. And then the family was like, we don't like Peyton's. Blah. But we love rocks. Mm. And that's how Stonehenge was started. Elsa, please, I know you're in there. There's so much trouble that I'm in. I need a lawyer and a place to hide. So just let me inside, or I'll get five to ten. I'm glad we have each other. It's just you and me. What are we gonna do? Do you want to do some blow, man? It doesn't have to be some blow, man. It could literally be any drug you want. Or we could gum it. I would actually prefer that. My throat is killing me. Tonight's adventure into the unknown. Shut, Shut up, up and, and, and sit down. 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 
What's up, Frenzy? Oh, hi, Sarge. <laughs> oh, hey, Frenzy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good there. Oh, How are you doing God. over there? I'm really good over here, too. <laughs> Um, we have a joke slinger tonight. We do. Joining us on the show. We have a comedian from Indiana. His name is Brent Terhoon. How you doing, Brent? <laughs> Good. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah. Nah, do, you, do you hear a hint of an accent in Frenzy's voice? Oh, a little bit, eh? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about there. You guys are always so crazy about the accent. Hey, you're not allowed to use that accent. That's cultural appropriation, (laughs) and you're not allowed. You're from Indiana, right? Yeah, as long as you guys don't sound like a southern hick, then we can call it a truth. Damn it. That's that's a fun one to do, though. I'm super offended. I might have to go tweet about that now. I would. It's, uh, yeah, the, the southern thing is like the go-to. I think everybody can kind of sound like that. You know, it's just I don't know what it is, but that's like the easier of the of the accents. I think. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would have to agree. The southern accent. I think it's the like yeah. sexiest sounding one. What? The southern one? No, you like the East Coast, like Bronx, Brooklyn accent, like. I like, I find that the, no, I find that attractive, but I red, think the, the Red Sox mo- are wicked awesome. The most of most of the population prefers the Southern. Like I'm weird that I like that, but you like that East Coast accent, though. Yeah, no, I know. Who, but I'm weird. Who's attracted to the Southern accents? You think that's what most people are attracted to for, like an American accent? Um, what about Creole? Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. There's too many. But I think the southern I, one. I just feel sounds... like the, the southern accent is everywhere. Like that'll just pop up places where you don't think it's gonna be. Just somebody else sound like that, you know? Like yeah. an Asian dude. That's a, that's weird. Yeah, not even like not even somebody on vacation or anything like. Just like I'll I'll be in <laughs> like you know Indiana and hear like a deep southern accent, and they're like, "No, I'm from here." I'm like, uh, "All right, I don't I don't know how that happened, but you know." No, I said it's weird if you hear it from, like, an Asian dude. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, when you, when you hear, like, a, a black guy or an Asian guy with, like, a British accent, and I, I just oh, yeah. get confused a little bit. I didn't know you guys could do that. Oh, I love that surprise, though, when that happens. It only happens once in a while, I think, in your lifetime. I've met, I met um, a, she was some kind of Asian korean or something this this chick she was from canada Hmm. like born and raised in canada but had a thick french accent she lived in like the frenchy part of of canada yeah yeah it was weird though because she was asian asian and she had a french accent Hmm. that's just confusing (laughs) yeah it was confusing too many things (laughs) too many things so uh brent you are a comedian and yes, uh sir, I try to be at least <laughs> and a writer, right? You write stuff. I try to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh I work for the it's a uh Bob and Tom show. It's a, it's a radio show. So uh and I work for them and I do stand up on the road. I try to every week at least. I've heard of this Bob and Tom show. Is that I am too. Is that that's an Indiana-based radio show? Yeah, they're from Indianapolis, and they're a nationally syndicated okay. radio yeah. show across the country. So, so it's a pretty popular one. It's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Didn't didn't Brad Scott, Brad Scott, a fellow comedian from Indiana and a good friend of ours, and he, he claims that you're his best friend. Do we you, are best friends. You agree and, with that? And nobody will tell you differently. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't I, think that you were going to agree with that. I agree with it. Should I not? Is there some dirt that you have on Brad Scott that I need to know about? No, we just like to bust his balls. It's okay. fun. It's I thought fun you were going to be like, play the tape. Yeah. <laughs> and roll it. As soon as we get that audio yeah. or that video, we will, uh, we'll, we'll share it with you first. I don't, yeah, Brad Scott, uh, his sex tape is going to be a racist rant. <laughs> a racist, homophobic sex tape. There's got to be all something of, All out the bad there. things in one. And there's got to be something out there that he doesn't want to get out into the into the public. I think we all have dirt. So, and I have dirt on you guys. So if we could just play the tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. 
So you guys are You guys could play the tape that I sent you on your own show. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. (laughs) So you guys are besties, BFFs. Um, How often would you say that you spend quality time together? (laughs) No, not holding hands. How much much hand holding is there? Be honest. Come on. (laughs) At first, there was a lot, but the spark has gone away a little oh, bit. Oh no! Uh, out of the relationship. No. Uh, I see. I see Brad often for stand up, and then uh, we we also did a podcast together about wrestling. So we would oh. spend I don't know four hours a week just doing that. You know. I remember so, this podcast. Yeah, it's what still going, and I'm occasionally a guest on the show, gotcha. but uh, I just got so busy. Yeah, but I just you know had to cut something, I suppose. I know, well, but if you're if you're a wrestling fan, you should check out uh, WrestleMania. That's the show, and that's wrestle with an A. Yep, right. Rass- yes, and, and our rassle. fans are called rassholes. So, a uh, clever marketing tactic <laughs> to just replace that one letter to get uh, accidental traffic sent your way for people looking yeah, for uh, WrestleMania, I imagine. We, <laughs> we were big in India, and we were like, why Why were we so big in India? And then we realized that, uh, you know, Indian people thought WrestleMania was WrestleMania, which was WWE. So they yeah. were, like, com- commenting on our stuff like it was an official page, and we loved it. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. I you, love that. You guys should have done yeah. an India tour. You should have. You could have merch. Yeah, we're going to be in... No, I don't even. If I could name an Indian town, I would, but I can't think of any off the top of my head where I hopefully wouldn't get it wrong and thumb down. So <laughs> there's a billion people there, and I can't name one place. Yeah, what's a, what, how dumb I am? What's the city in India? Frenzy. Come hey Alexa, here. what's the city in India? Urban area substantially bigger than a town. Oh, she that is geographically located. Completely. She she's just given me a definition of city. city. Alexa, be quiet. That shuts her uh, off when you say that. Shut up, Alexa. You shut your mouth. Yeah, you could. Bangladesh is oh, in India. Bangladesh. Bangkok. Or is that Thailand? That's See, Thailand. That's how dumb I am. Bangladesh is in India, I think. Maybe. I don't know. I don't even I'm know what the capital is. It's like Jakarta Mumbai. is the capital of India. Uh, Speak, speaking one of... Uh, P-U-N-E, so I'm going to call it Poon. New Delhi. There you uh, go. Yeah, so, and these are all cities that have 18 million, 12 million, 7 million, and I can't name one. So that's <laughs> yeah. how dumb I am. Well, I just said Jakarta was the capital of India, and it's actually the capital of Indonesia, so I am way dumber. Yeah, you guys. Speak Close enough, am I right, y'all? <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen this uh, this video? Speaking of Alexa, um, it's it's on YouTube here. It's called "When Your Kids Figure Out How to Use Alexa." Familiar? I've not seen that. All right, I want to play this. Shopping one. list. You have- so this this lady, this mom, just asked Alexa to uh, like play her shopping list, like read off her shopping list. I have 62 items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. Card zero. New. PPPPP on your face. Fart. <laughs> and stinky toilet. Would you like to hear the next five items? Yes. <laughs> P. R. Mean. P. B. P. Poop your face. The ultimate car garage. And super ultimate car garage. Would you like to hear the next five items? <laughs> yes. What? Poopy toilet. P. R. New. P. And poop poop. Would you like to hear the next five items? Yes. Poop. 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 And poop. Would you like to hear the next five items? Yes. Yes. By poop and I dab. Potty. Bar. I poop on my dad. And poop. Would you like to hear the next five items? Your P's are so pronounced. Milk. Hot dogs, poop, pee, and bark. Would you like to hear the next five items? Yes. Barbie, pee, tea, poop, and Nutella. Would- <laughs> and Nutella. <laughs> Hot dog, Nutella, Barbie, and then everything else is pee and poop. So apparently the kids got a hold of Alexa and added a few things to the shopping list. Yeah, those are important things <laughs> to you're going to have that much... 
poop on on the list. It's also it's dangerous to have Nutella. There's so much poop. There should have been paper towels on that list. It would have fit in the pee theme, the papa theme. Oh shit! So much poop. <laughs> <laughs> All that poop and no toilet paper, apparently. Right? Uh. Did you see the news story of some kid got a hold of her mom's phone and ordered $300 of toys? Oh, yeah, I heard uh, about that. I saw the headline. And the mom but... didn't know about it until they pulled it. So the, the mailman essentially pulled up and was stacking boxes on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> was it from Amazon? Probably. Yeah, from Amazon. Oh, yeah. that'd be so easy to do for kids. They make it way too easy for adults. Yeah, you. Uh, oh you, yeah, you're an Amazon junkie, frenzy. Right? Yeah, I I'm legit. Like, how uh, how are those those classes going? Those meetings you're going to at night for <laughs> for your your problem? I don't know, but right now there is a the latest thing is a baby banana infant training toothbrush and teether. No, hey, frenzy! It's um, a banana we need to that's talk been about peeled. This. Me and Brent are here this, and this it's evening rubber, to and talk to you about like your Amazon toothbrush. shopping addiction. It frenzy! Seven thousand reviews. Brent, Brent, frenzy is three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in debt. I am not. because of her Amazon addiction. That is a lie. <laughs> that is a lie. Uh, Frenzy, your buying has affected me in the following way. Yes, tell me. Uh, <laughs> no, I, uh, I do. I have that too. I feel like with Amazon, you should have like a three-day waiting period. Yeah, like for when you buy a gun. <laughs> you buy a gun, you and then like right check. before it places the order, it's like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> and it shows you a picture of your bank account. Yeah. <laughs> And they then should. takes a selfie you, of yourself, like, what are you doing? And then you look at yourself and you're like, oh, yeah, I don't need if, that. Yeah, here's the picture of you with all the other Amazon stuff that you don't use. I know. Because it was on sale. Yeah, I'm, I'd be curious to look back and see if, if we can put together a cumulative <laughs> number, um, how much you spent total since you got the Amazon app. Oh, I can go back and look at every single order. But does it give you like a grand total? Well, I'd have to add it up, but I have a calculator. Did they send you... pretty good at 10K, too. Did you get an email from like the CEO? He's like, thanks for the fucking yacht that I was able to get this year, Frenzy. Thanks to you. No, but it's weird (laughs) because I did get a couple of surveys where they said where like, if you review this one product, we'll send you a $2 certificate to your Amazon account. And I was like, "Uh, yeah. And it took like two seconds. So I want to be one of those people that just reviews a bunch of shit on Amazon and I get free stuff to try out and I'll review it. I want to be that. I'm pretty sure you bought somebody at Amazon a Porsche this year. Just in how much <laughs> you spent. I did not spend that much. Whatever. <laughs> I saved money. Do probably. you guys? Oh, yeah. You said you do this thing where you save money. Yeah. I do that, too. So yeah. I'll buy something more expensive. But I'm like, it's free shipping. <laughs> and I don't need this that. thing to begin with. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Do you guys? Uh, are you? A, do you get a little tipsy and shop too? Is that are you? Is that a problem for you? Mm, probably. No. no. Probably. I don't shop when I'm tipsy. Really? I would buy Never, way more stuff. Not once. Maybe like around the holidays, I'm feeling jolly, but. Other than that, that's no. what you call it as jolly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> around the holidays. That's the positive spin she's put on the whole situation. <laughs> it's jolly. Uh huh. I have an article that I'm going to send you guys. It's, the article is uh, the amount of money Americans spend on uh, spend on drunk Amazon shopping is comically high. Uh, really. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that's... I'm going to send it to you, friendly, on your Facebook. Okay. Uh, but that was a study that we used for Bob and Tom. And I, of course, I don't remember the jokes, but there's shockingly amounts. Like, what, what kind of alcohol do you drink while you're shopping? And the biggest one is uh, gin. Or who, like, if you drink gin, you spend the most at, like, $82. Really? Like per Yeah, that's probably that's probably old folks drinking that gin and yeah. buying pointless shit off the internet. They just figured out how to work Amazon. 
like their <sighs> their their uh, granddaughter or something taught them how to use it, and now they're just going on a spending spree. Then the study is: What alcohol are you under the influence the most when buying items on Amazon? So gin was first, rum, then vodka, white wine, red wine, tequila, beer, and whiskey. Oh, tequila. And whiskey yeah, if you're was the drinking amount, whiskey, you spent, I... you spent like thirty-eight dollars. Yeah, if you're drinking whiskey. whiskey, I'm surprised you even can like log on to Amazon. Mm, yeah. You... Uh, the, with whiskey, I'm like on Amazon. You won't order you, more whiskey. You definitely might not, or, or tequila. You might. You definitely probably won't remember all the shit you bought that night. <laughs> That'd be funny to like give to, to buy someone like a fifty dollar or hundred dollar yeah. Amazon gift card and put it on their account, and then just they just get wasted, and then see, see what, what they you, buy. See what they buy the next oh. day, like kind of like drunken history, but drunken Amazon shopping. Hmm. But you you only get that amount to spend. Like you're not going to be able to yeah. blow your whole like. I say shit. we try it out with you. I'm gonna Ooh. get I'm gonna get you wasted on tequila. Oh god. Yeah, I know it's it's unfortunate, but it, it probably has to be tequila. Ugh. And get you just kind of on the edge of blackout drunk, and hand you um you know your phone with the fucking Amazon app opened up. And hundred dollars just chilling there. There's nothing in my cart. I have to pick everything. No, wide open cart, and just see oh, what you see what you buy. Geez, that'd be weird. And just see. Yeah, what... I think <laughs> Amazon it has Amazon. to be like at least point oh eight, and then oh yeah, even we're... then you should be drunk. Like there's a limit. Yeah, because point oh eight really isn't uh, really isn't. It uh, depends on how much you drink, you know. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have to get one of those little breathalyzers. They have they make breathalyzers that you can like attach to your phone nowadays. Yeah, get one of those and uh, we'll we'll check your blood alcohol level. Okay, at least point oh eight. I'm, I'm this down is for science. No, I'm down for that. But then I also want to do another time where I just get completely ripped out of my mind and do the same thing and see what I buy. But I don't get to mm. see the results until I do both or something. Like, because otherwise one will influence mm. the other. Yeah, but you're you still have your wits about you when you when you if you're high compared to yeah. being drunk on tequila. Well, yeah, I know. You don't like black out when you're when you're stoned. No, but it'd just be like interesting a, to like look at I them both side by side. I accidentally stabbed a homeless guy last night. I was so stoned. No, I'm not saying I wouldn't remember, but uh, just having them both side by side because then one won't influence the other. Like this last time, I bought these things, so you're just like, gonna buy like a, a pallet of Doritos <laughs> on Amazon oh, when man. you're high. That's if what you're gonna do. Go bad, I totally would. By the way, a breathalyzer on Amazon is roughly twenty dollars. Just so you guys know. Yeah, you get drunk on tequila and and open uh. up the Amazon app. You're gonna be buying like weird shit, like throwing stars and fucking like and like an old Civil War cannon or something. You're gonna be buying weird shit. That's what I see you doing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even more dangerous than Amazon would be eBay because that's like. You know, that's like there might be one of that item, so you you could drunkenly just get competitive with it. Oh, I, oh yeah. I I, n- I was never a fan of that. I tried eBay a couple of times. Not a fan. Like I can't. No. no. How come? Um, if I want to buy it, I just want to buy it. You just want that shit now. You don't like the fun of and like bidding I, on things. Yeah, especially if I decide to buy something, I feel like I've I've made the choice and put thought into it. So yeah. I don't want it just to be like, no, I want it and I can't have it. Then it's just going to piss me off. Fair enough. So. Fair enough. (laughs) Hey, uh, Brent, by the way, getting back to you. Yes. um, (laughs) So selfish. We. um, No, we were having fun. (laughs) um, I'm curious. How long have you been slinging jokes? Uh, I think this. Fall will be 13 years oh, doing nice. stand up. Okay, so you've 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 reached that like proverbial like you know hump that 10 year mark where like you you, yes. you consider yourself uh, you consider yourself like a veteran after 10 year mark a decade tenured yeah tenured. probably but yeah. then you know you meet people that have been doing it 20 years and you're like you know it's like with anything. You know, you're a veteran until you meet somebody that's been doing it longer than you, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but I, this isn't my first rodeo. I've been around the block. I've seen some stuff, you know. 
Yeah, what kind of stuff? So, and I, I started when I was 16 in high school, so... Uh, what? You did? How did that, that work? How did yeah. that happen? They had, like, these things. It was just, like, it's called the Coffee shop. House, which was essentially um, an open mic. Mm -hmm. So people would do poetry and do a acoustic guitar, and I just went up and did stand-up, and then, so I've been doing it ever since. So you were kind of like in an episode of One Tree Hill at the coffee shop towards the end of the, the, no, the series. No, that is a terrible reference. <laughs> you are never allowed to use One Tree Hill references. <laughs> they are banned from this show. Whatever. <laughs> the, the One Tree Hill references are lost on me, so I'll have to use a, a different show. I don't know. Dean I'm going to say Hill. yes. <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> Just nod and smile. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome and ballsy though. I couldn't imagine being sixteen and like doing that. I mean, that yeah, was I your... was, I was, I'm still an introvert, so I don't know what compelled me to do it because I was way more nervous and you know, as a kid. So I don't know why I thought I would, I could do it, and then you know, I just kept doing it. And uh, yeah, I'm, pro I'm sure probably looking back, watching a tape of me back then would be terrible, which oh, I have. He... You should you do know it. videos of me at the talent show in high school. I got second place um, behind an alto sax player, so I'll never forgive him for that. And his alto sax. sax. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure if I watched the video back, I'd probably be really bad. Do you remember? But I'm not, not going to subject myself to any of that. Do you remember any of your jokes from back then? Uh, some of my jokes. Uh, I, I talk, I'm a redhead. I, I know you guys can tell that over a podcast. I sound like a redhead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. I, yeah. I picked up on that. This is two gingers in a row that we've had on the show. Both with, um, Tony was last with time. authentic facial hair. Yeah. He's got an epic mustache and you got an epic beard, man. We're just rounding all the bases. Yeah. Part if, if participation like, ribbon. Like three more gingers. That's called a sunburn. That's what the group is called. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit! Uh, oh, okay. So what were you saying? Um, oh, you asked some of my first jokes. So I talked about yes. being a redhead, of course, because I mean, if you're gonna have something that makes you stand out, you should at least acknowledge it right off the bat. Yep. Um, and I remember one of my jokes was. I was like, I had a, a bottled nose dolphin for a pet, but it died, so I recycled it. That was one of my first jokes. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I cringe just saying oh that to you guys. I, I love dolphins. In a room full of people. I love dolphins. I have a tattoo of dolphins on my neck, and on Amazon right now, there's a picture of a National Geographic book for children called Dolphins. You're on Amazon and, right now. <laughs> yeah, and I loved that joke. So I think if you were going to offend anybody, it would have been me, and you didn't. So props to you. Uh, I think. You well, know. I think the, the fact that I said that and that it's on Amazon right now is a sign that you need to buy that book. <laughs> hey, it was just sitting made. there. Like, I wasn't even touching the computer. You need to have a t-shirt yeah. made. Yeah. With that joke on it. It's like this dolphin <laughs> just looking uh, at I you. Had if I had t-shirts made for every bad joke I wrote, I would have tons of t-shirts. <laughs> You'd have a collection. <laughs> so how did uh, you and Brad end up meeting and becoming uh, uh, lo lovers? On Bumble. Uh, Grinder. Secret. Yeah, it was on, it was on Grinder. <laughs> and then we exchanged phone numbers. Uh <laughs> We just, our home club here, uh, comedy club is here in Indianapolis, so we, you know, you just meet all kinds of people. Yeah. And I met Brad, and then we, you know, you bond because of comedy, but then we also bonded because we liked wrestling, so mm. that's kind of, you know, whenever we get together, we're always talking about current wrestling and old wrestling, and, you know, with the podcast that we did, we, we our focus was really talking about wrestling but in a funny way because there are people just like with any sport you you, you listen to a professional broadcaster because they have professional opinions and we are neither professionals or wrestlers or anything like that so we could try to make something funny versus you know breaking down storylines and stuff like that of wrestling 
And we, I guess now more, we like, we like horror movies and scary movies, too. We talk about that quite often. Oh, scary movies. There's, I remember I used to be a big wrestling fan when I was a kid. I remember I, I, I my dad took me to one uh, big wrestling match that they had in the Twin Cities here. I was I couldn't mm-hmm. have been more than like six or seven. Was it WWF back then? Um, I don't remember it. I, I know there was it had uh, Hulk Hogan was there. Yeah, and the the Bushwhack mm-hmm. brothers, mm-hmm. the twins brothers, um, like Brett the Bushwhackers. They probably WWF then. Yep, it was the Brett the Hitman Hart yeah. and like all those dudes. And it was this Hacksaw big Jim. It was probably, it must have been in the Dome or something. I can't remember yeah, where it was, it but I was It was so either young. the Dome or maybe the convention center, but that was... That could have been. But I was a big fan when I was a kid. I thought it was awesome. But as as I got older, I started liking other shit. Um, probably started girl. liking women, huh? Yeah, it was probably girls. Am yeah. I right? Yeah. <laughs> but there's so many people that still love that WWE, or what is it now? F? WWE. E now? E. WWE. Yeah. Why did they change that? Why? What? Why changed did, ownership. Hasn't that McMahon dude it always was, owned it? Um, the World Wildlife Federation had a copyright of WWF. Yep. So they had to change okay. the E. So they had a campaign of get the F out. That was the campaign. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I do remember seeing a documentary about that. Huh. But they have switched ownership since then, too, right? Or after it switched. No, WWE. it's still Vince McMahon, but they the went public time? so you can buy stock and wrestling uh, if you want to. That's what happened. To. Okay. okay. Crazy. Yeah, but there's... Vince McMahon is like 72. Like, he just had a birthday. So, you know, and he still goes to every show, like every Monday, Tuesday show, and like is still very active. Okay. And it's going to start the XFL. At 72. Yeah, you got to hand it to the guy. He built a massive fucking empire. And it still has a gigantic fan base to this day. Like, they just signed a deal with Fox to have a show for, I think, two billion with a B dollars. Jesus. So, there's big money in wrestling. Wow. What do you, I didn't what do you see guys any think, of it, but there's money in that place. What do you guys think his net worth is in 2018? The net worth of WWE? No, of Vince McMahon. Oh, uh, I don't know. It, I mean, it's definitely not $2 billion because, you know, he doesn't get all that money from the deal. Maybe at least a billion, I would think. I'm He's gonna, the Mr. Burns of wrestling, essentially. I'm going to guess $300 million. Three point two, three point two billion. Oh. What? Um, what do you he, do with all that money? <laughs> he's the highest paid executive in terms of cash payouts, topping even WWE. Oh no, that's somebody else. What? Somebody else? Yeah. Who? So Vince isn't worth three point whatever billion. Um, Who are you looking at? I'm looking at too many things because I'm interested in this now. Sorry, one second. His real time net worth is three point two billion, is what they're saying. Vince McMahon. Vincent McMahon. Yes. Three point. Holy shit! How... He made eight hundred million dollars in revenues in 2017. What the fuck? Poor guy. He couldn't afford a gold yacht that year. Yeah, he's a third Whatever generation the wrestling the promoter, now. and he grew up in a in a trailer park in South Carolina and joined his father's wrestling company, like super small wrestling company, in 1972. So, like, he definitely has worked his way up. Wow, mm-hmm. that's the- I mean, that's the reason Linda McMahon is on the the cabinet for small businesses, you know, yeah, and the president's cabinet picked by, picked by Trump. It, obviously, they built a small business up. So it's pretty pretty weird that you know he's worth that much money. I know, but you I mean, think about when they say people are worth that much money. Where do they? Where are they getting? I mean, obviously there's statistics that have been said because you can't just say. I mean, you can just say anything you want basically on the internet, but you'd think there'd there'd be some sort of research gone into that. And who does that? That's someone's job. 
they're always talking about like this person makes this much or can they you can you google people frenzy can you google and see how much brent terhune is worth <laughs> what his net worth is yes okay i can pull up my my bank account and tell you how much I want to see what the internet says and, and look up Brad Scott too, because that's probably like $12. Okay. Okay. I'm looking. <laughs> and that's $12 and change, not in, and folding money. You've got to yeah. go to the coin stock It's a jar of random coins. <laughs> in a mason jar. Uh, in the yard, buried in the yard. Yeah. So. I, I don't see my net worth on here. No. Um, I'm not mm-hmm. seeing it either. I'm seeing really. Some, it doesn't register with there's like some things Forbes? on here though. Um, you've uh, do you do you go on the road a lot uh, these days? Yeah, I try to be Let's gone every week. So uh, I think last year I did maybe 46 weeks on the road. Wow. Jeez. Um. Yeah, and so, and I count some of those if I'm like working in town, but working like a week of clothes, you know, so Thursday through Saturday. But no wife so, or kids. No wife or kids. What's that? I, I have a, a girlfriend. Of, I, she, we're engaged, but I don't like the F word, so I say girlfriend. But I don't like fiance. Fiance. I have a joke about it. So dumb. Oh. Fiance. Fiance. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> My fiance. Well, congratulations. <laughs> On the engagement. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, but you've also been doing some more YouTube YouTube things, just kind of <coughs> yeah, making videos. little videos about just kind of, I don't know, I wouldn't call them rants. I'd say more like just things that you notice. Well, you have like funny characters too, it looks like, that yeah. you play on. Different characters too. Yeah, I try to, uh, you know, I I was on the road for so long and. And uh, I feel like I just had to switch up what I was doing creatively to make it fun. But also, you know, people on the Internet have seen me way more than that. People have seen me live doing stand up. So I guess the the goal with the with videos is or anything besides not live performing is to get people to come to my shows on purpose. Yeah. You know? <laughs> not just be like, hey, there's a comedy show tonight. Just as opposed to, hey, there's a Brent Terhune show tonight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the goal, right? As a comedian, to to gain a, a following of, of fans that, that specifically are, are coming out to see what you're creating when you're on stage, what, what you're putting out there. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's my goal, uh, is just have, you know, like I said, have people show up on purpose and enjoy what the stuff that I like, you know, and that's what I'm trying to talk about. And my stand-up is stuff that I enjoy, and a lot of the videos that I make are stuff that I think is interesting, you know. So uh, just to find common ground with a lot of people, and especially with the Internet, you can like a topic that's not that popular like wrestling, but there's so many people online that will talk about it. It's like a different community, you know. Here, my favorite video that you've got here on your YouTube channel is uh, Thoughts in Walmart. Yeah, that one's great. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. thanks. <laughs> you need to do more of those. I only see one with that theme. Oh, that one is funny. That's my favorite one. I would love to see more of those along those lines. I thought about doing refrigerator thoughts. Yeah. Uh, shower oh, thoughts. Just as you, refrigerator thoughts. Shower thoughts. So toilet, yeah. toilet thoughts. Things you think up while you're taking a shit. Car thoughts. Yeah, All especially on the toilet. My, one of mine would just be my legs are asleep because <laughs> I've been playing this game on my phone for too long. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, the thoughts in Walmart one though that like you could do you could even do like thoughts in Walmart part two kind of thing because there's i i gotta imagine there's a million things you can think of <laughs> <laughs> that pertain to shit you see or hear in walmart yeah i mean there's a whole you know that people of walmart.com or whatever it is and you yeah. can see you know and i've been lucky enough to see some of those people in the wild so i think <laughs> if you hang out at a walmart i mean you could just see different characters every yeah. hour you can see some it's magic. Like one of those, it's like in the animal world, there's a watering hole where all the animals go, but in the human world, there's Walmart. You know, yeah. you yeah. see them in their natural habitat. I like that. Walmart is the watering hole of human beings. <laughs> I mean, 
Some people know, are anti Walmart, so but I we've all been in one, I it think, is. at this point, you know. <laughs> I have no shame going into Walmart. I will gladly go in there. I just don't. I just dislike it. It's it's just a little bit disorganized. And every Walmart's time, awesome. oh, every time they they put like they have this new system where they bag your stuff and it's like on a circle, and it circles they around. It and they put it in a bag and they spin it and they put it in a bag and they spin it. And literally every time I go, the person that left in front of me forgot a bag. Like a lazy Susan? Or yeah, like it's a lazy a, Susan with or a just plastic claim. bags. No, like a lazy Susan, essentially. Huh. But every time the person in front of me checks out and then they were like, oh, she forgot her bag. And I'm like, you guys are always making people forget their bags. Like, this <laughs> is how you can make everything so much cheaper because you steal half the shit that people buy. They got to recoup. They forget it. The and they're just like, I'm too them. lazy to go back and get that. So they make money it's the baggage the you, think they bag some, the things. you think there's some kind of conspiracy a little bit, a little with, bit. The, with the lazy susans a little bit at, i mean every Walmart. time i go it happens so oh, interesting i don't know just uh, a, i think just you should thought. i think you should dig deeper <laughs> dig deeper into that's that that's why you're an amazon person because they don't forget <laughs> and neither do you yeah right i know <laughs> <sighs> and if that if my Amazon package isn't at my house by eight or nine PM by the time they say it, I start to get like irritated and then What do you do? Well nothing. I just <laughs> I just get real mad. Real, get, real mad. I just get real crabby. Huh. <laughs> Man, where's my stuff? Where's my <laughs> shit? <laughs> where's my box of shit I ordered? Porch? Yeah, so it's like usually it's usually mostly things that I order for other people though. Like I don't I uh I do. She'll buy like three things for her okay. and then one thing for someone else and be like, Well, I was buying some for you and then I saw these other things. Whatever. <laughs> and there was a deal if I got five of them. No, I don't go that I'm not like a hoarder that way. <laughs> no. Too many clothes probably. But I also like give them away to friends after I don't wear them. I do the one year closet rule. If I haven't worn it a year, it goes away. Uh-huh. What? That's always good. I I'm a t-shirt like collector. So if I see a t-shirt, I'm, I'm always buying t-shirts. And then once a year I'm forced to purge the closet. Yep. Really? I don't do that. I once once the shirt <laughs> once the shirt no longer stays on my body because there's so many holes in it or whatnot, then I'll throw it out. Or your underwear begrudgingly. that has holes in it too. Or my what underwear? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's not even like covering anything. It's pretty much just an elastic band. <laughs> just walk up to you and rip a hole. <laughs> yeah, These junk, are going in the garbage. Junk's just swinging around anyways. Like yeah. yeah, I got rid of those though. That's good. And socks. I blow through socks. Yeah, it's like, just a belt at, at this point. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just providing that feeling of comfort. There's no comfort left. Some kind of fucked up garter belt. <laughs> kind it's, of like a, it's like a thong uh, <clears throat> nut cup. I don't know what it is. Basically, nut cup is a thong just with the nut cup in the front. You guys could have... No, th- like a Speedo. You, there could have been a better way for the nut cup to be created, I think. There could have been material that maybe would have been more comfortable for men. Like an airbag? Um, no, <laughs> just like softer <laughs> material. Can you imagine a fucking airbag for That would for probably dick? hurt worse oh, when it of course, off. yeah. It would crush oh. your... It would crush everything. Oof, duh. And just smush it like... Then the, the lady Later. from OnStar would be like, "Sir, we were seeing that your airbag was deployed. <laughs> your nut cup has OnStar." <laughs> do you think the Do you think the first nut cup was made of maybe like a paper mache kind of thing uh, or like a cast? It's probably made out of like I mean, a some goat, dude goat obviously or had got kicked in the nuts like super bad and was like, "No man should ever have to experience this again. I, I shall create." The doubt, nut cup. I doubt it. You don't think so? It was probably created for it sports. Sounds noble. Like it sounds like to be a good good way to be <laughs> a good man. Noble. It sounds like a good dude. Yeah, like we're the <laughs> you we're, yay men. You like, protect protect those our nuts. balls. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Also, women get women get to do it. Test it on, like for size wise. Yeah, yeah like, but that yeah. Did he just make the one for him, and then somebody was like, "I need a little bigger." Or was he like testing it out? I think I think both. I think he maybe figured it out and then was going to test it out and then was like, "I will help all the other men make them." And yeah, this no, this sounds this, legit. This, this is I'm like pretty a, sh- 
This is all fact. Yeah, this is like a thing. Hmm? 1874. The jock strap was invented in 18, 1874 by C.F. Bennett of, of Chicago Sporting Goods Company, Sharp and Smith, to provide comfort and support for bicycle jockeys working the cobblestone streets of Boston. Oh, shit. Okay. I'm going to Boston in a couple for, weeks. I should take a picture of this place if it's still there. Send it to you guys. It's not there. Maybe. It'd be like 200 years old. Well, the where the building <laughs> was back then. Oh. Huh. The picture of and the, I'll put the, a jock strap on and I'll take a picture in you, front you, of the street of the Starbucks that's now there. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> you'll take a picture of the Starbucks. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go in, order a coffee, they still have and a glass case of the first jock strap at my yeah. Starbucks. There's like four buildings that are, that were there before the Starbucks <laughs> and the and, uh, the whatever building was there for the jock strap. I'm yeah. disappointed. I thought like the Romans would have invented it back then i mean they kind of didn't they wear like no they didn't armor not, over their junk no they had no respect for the leather for, for the nuts no respect whatsoever i don't give a shit about i think it was nuts. bloody war but they all agreed to not hit in the nuts yeah oh it was just like, a gentleman's a, agreement so when did that when did the agreement end is my question then it never ended there's a there's a stand it's a man code you People don't always abide by it, but there is an unwritten, unofficial code that you don't, even if you're in a fight with somebody, you don't hit anybody in the nuts. You stay away from another dude's nuts unless your life or your butthole are in imminent danger. Okay. That's the only reason you should ever go after another dude's nuts. I agree with that. I'm just wondering when was it, I mean, you guys should have, not you guys, but it should have never been known that this was a weakness because... I'm, I think we figured it out pretty damn quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Understood. The first... Yeah, it doesn't take long. Once you do it once, you're like, well, I don't want that to happen. Again. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, they're like, Atticus, you can't believe what happened. Yeah, the first caveman who, like, with big saggy nuts, who, like, accidentally sat down on his nuts in the cave one night, Ooh, right away. He... him on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I think they found out that their nuts are tender before they figured out fire, most likely. Right? I would think so. I don't know. What do gorillas do? Somebody... They have tiny little nuts. Gorillas? Yeah. They have really, really small. <laughs> I'm serious. They have, like, tiny testicles and little wieners because they don't need to... Uh... They're, like, bought up badass boss motherfuckers. They don't need to, like, chase for females and to, to mate. So, so size doesn't matter. Like nature, na- apparently that's the thing nature does. Like if you look at, uh, um, is it chimps? I think, I think they got big nuts. Chimpanzees. Yeah. Is it sure. chimps that got big nuts? I know gorillas got little nuts. Orangutans. Like do. they don't need to. They're just like, ooh, ooh, come here. And, there's, and the female girl is like, okay. <laughs> I don't think she's like, okay. <laughs> she's totally like, Okay. Gorillas. I think in the gorilla world, it's all about how much money you got, because that's why humans are so close to gorillas. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the money. The silver, not about size. The silver. I'm pretty sure everything I'm saying is 100 percent true. Yeah, I'm. I believe that it's 100% I've seen. True. I've seen many documentaries. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm oh. basically an expert. <laughs> I've watched a lot of TV and lot read lots of things on the interweb. I know everything. Did you Google uh, gorilla nuts? No, I didn't Google what are you doing? gorilla nuts. I was Googling orangutan nuts. Oh, what about chimp nuts? <laughs> I'll do gorilla nuts. I'll do chimp nuts. Gorilla testicles. Balls. I'm doing Test- balls. Testicles. Mine didn't work. Gorilla testicles size. Okay. Despite being the largest primate, weighing in at 350 to 450 pounds, the gorilla has testicles that only weigh a bit more than one ounce total for the pair. What? Yeah. Wow. Um, although humans and orangutans are lighter than gorillas, they are better endowed, weighing in at one and a half ounces. Hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, half ounce difference on there. Despite... That's really not that much. But that's weight. That's weight. Not necessarily uh, size. He, so human brains are nearly three times larger than chimpanzee brains. Um, but in the testicle department, human testes top out at about 50 grams. And chimps routine, 
routinely weigh 150 to 170 grams. So like 100 more at least. Double, if not more. It's because they can hold... They can hold they can hold semen. So That's what they're designed for. Oh boy, <laughs> it's interesting. It says it says it uh, turns out that the size of a primate's testicles are a really good indicator of sperm count. Mm-hmm. Uh, what researchers didn't count on was that sperm count is a good indicator of how secure a male is in the love of a good female primate. Yeah, it says in a more polygamous species, the the. Sp- genetic code that they have in their testicles continues to develop for longer after birth when they're in a polygamous relationship, the chimpanzees who tests that like that's someone's job. Someone study that. Oh yeah. There's dudes who go to school um, so that someday they can jerk off chimpanzees and gorillas or horses and study their baby batter. You don't have to go to school for that, just so you guys no? know. No? Really? <laughs> oh, my God. You just have to take, like, an online test or something? Just like you don't have to go to school to be a yeah, substitute it's, it's teacher. All online. Sign me up, dude. I would jerk off chimpanzees for a living. That's easy. If it pays well, why not? You're making them happy. You're getting Who a paycheck. You're like, you'd be covered in... You're doing yeah. science. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> How did we get all this stuff? <laughs> I was about to Jeez. say, who would have thought by the end of the Whoa. show we would all be primatologists? I know, We right? just know everything now. Oh, yeah. I feel smarter. I'm ready. I got my bag packed. I'm going on an adventure <laughs> with some chimpanzees in the jungle. See you guys. Um, I want to hear real quick, Brent. Um, I'm curious to know about the first time that you really bombed or the 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 worst time that you bombed on stage. You've got to have a horror story well, of bombing. I wish... If that ever happened, I could tell you that now. Uh, <laughs> I've just had weird, uncomfortable shows. Like, I did a show at a prison before. Really? And that was intimidating because there were, like, 300 prisoners to, like, one guard. Like, literally one guard off to the side. What? 300 what? Prisoners. So you're, like, Johnny Cash so, singing? Yeah, that's where I went in thinking, oh, I'll be like Johnny Cash, but... The thing entire. you don't realize is everybody knew who Johnny Cash was when he was performing. <laughs> Nobody gave a shit or knew who I was when I was performing, you know? Did you and, feel like you had to kind of um, cater your jokes a little bit to uh, the prison guards, specifically because there's only one guard on duty? You don't want to piss them off? Yeah, no gay jokes at all, I would think. No prison yeah, rape no, jokes? I, no, I can't. Be, I couldn't be like, hey, be safe at home, guys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have been like that. It was just it was just weird because I think right off the bat you just have to acknowledge that you're in their house and you're sca- if you just tell them you're scared, that's what they want to hear and then they laugh cuz they they like you just showing that you're like comfortable but uncomfortable at the same time. Yeah. Cuz it's it's an odd situation cuz it's like one of those things where you walk into a, a, like a bar and everybody knows you're not from that town. It's like everybody knows I'm not a prisoner, you know. So when when you first got to the prison before you started doing your stand up, which gang did you join in mm-hmm. order to make sure you survived? Uh, I I joined the the ginger gang. Did, oh, uh, really? Accepting. I did you bring any no- paraphernalia in with you? Sneak anything in? I hear they have strong numbers. Yeah, it's, uh, mostly sunscreen. Yes, <laughs> some beard combs, maybe beard some. Maybe so, yeah. Shampoo. Well, if you if you carve a toothbrush just right, you'll have a beard comb <laughs> and there a shiv <gasps> and an eyebrow yeah. comb. We could work it's, for that too. <laughs> but Sand. we had to go through security. Like I had to leave my phone in my car. I had to go through metal detectors, and the lady, like doing all that, had like one finger on one of her hands, just one finger. So that's always good when. <laughs> The staff is injured when you're walking in. You're like, well, that's going to be my hand when I leave. <laughs> Jesus. She lost all those fingers <laughs> doing her prison job. Yeah. And, and I don't, I, of course, I didn't ask, but I just kind of figured, you know. Like they keep biting my fucking fingers off. How did you get this gig? Did you find it yourself or did someone do it for you or did you volunteer or what? It was through a, a booker. So it was at me and two other comedians and it. I found out later that one of the comedians, the headliner, also he's a, a like an acting coach, and he teaches Shakespeare to prisoners. Oh, so okay. 
but but like this this was not related. He's just been in prisons before teaching. So uh, he was a convict. So I didn't get the gig through him. <laughs> yeah, but he just teaches prisoners. So I got asked to do it, and of course I'm like, well, I got to do it for the story. So right. of course I took it. Yeah. Huh. Um, oh, it's cool. I think it's cool that you did. It's just it, interesting to find out, like, did what? it pay? Did it pay decent? Those prison gigs? Did you at least get to eat in the cafeteria? Uh, <laughs> not enough to, uh, yeah, not enough to end up in a prison riot or something like that. But it, it, everything went well, so it paid fairly good for, you know, putting your life in danger. I suppose I've never had to like do stand up while in danger, but. I guess that's the closest I've been, I suppose. Did you have kind of, were you f- trying to formulate um, kind of a game plan if shit did go sideways while you're there? And just kind of in your mind, like, okay, if if something does happen and people start shanking each other and a riot breaks out, did you kind of have any type of plan? Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to just curl up? You find an exit? I tried to pick out who's, who's bitch I was going to be. Okay. That's... <laughs> not a bad idea uh 300 dudes no. and you gotta find the biggest dude and be like whatever you want man just keep just protect me i'll do whatever you want i am yours yeah i just treat it like i was a real prisoner I'm it was, no it was weird because like they would heckle a little bit but it's like you can't say anything back right the right. normal right. inclination <laughs> in a regular show is to you know say something back or you know <sighs> make them feel bad so they leave the show but you can't do that out of prison because somebody else will shank you, you know? Yeah. It was it was weird. That's so weird. Somebody did yell out, you stupid, during my set. So I oh, think sweet. that means I did well. That's you amazing. stupid. If you, ever do, if you ever do one again or find yourself in that situation, you should always have snacks on you so that you can, you know, like uh-huh. some beef jerky, well, some cigarettes. You could, like, have, like, hey, dude, like, I'm just here for the fun and ta- toss out stuff you'll be their friends like instantly some uh trail mix thanks yeah, I always have <laughs> snacks on me anyway so. good that's good <laughs> give me your commissary account I'll add some stuff I'll add some money to it just leave me alone um Brent, does anybody we, need a bar of soap? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> we've got uh we've got a couple um questions that got sent in by listeners that they have for you we have two of them uh, the first, okay. the first one here is from Justin Barrett, and he asks, um, "Where did you get the nickname Eater of Bread Bowls?" <laughs> uh, well, I'm I'm WrestleMania with Brad. His uh, there's a wrestler name. His name is Shinsuke Nakamura. He's from Japan, and his nickname is that he is the king of strong style, which is a style of wrestling. So I named Brad the King of Bong style. Oh, that's where he got that name. Smoking weed. Yeah, um, yeah. That's where that comes from. Okay. okay. That's the I name. Like that. he, that's the name he uses in our fantasy football league. King of Bong style. Yeah, King yeah. of Bong style. Yeah. Full contact uh, martial and arts strikes. He's also the smoker of bowls. So <laughs> that was his other one. So then he was a smoker of bowls, so I became the eater of bread bowls. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Okay. I like it. Um, and I've got one last one here. This is from Scott Gardner. Um, and he asks, um, is, is there any heat with Fireball Eric for taking your spot on WrestleMania? I don't Let know me that. tell you something, brother. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Eric. Oh, shit. And it ain't going to be pretty. You're not going to be able to walk out of that podcast when I see you on Sunday. <laughs> I'm trying to cut a, a, a fake promo like I hate the guy. Big uh, words. I love it. Big I, I, words from Brent Terhune to <laughs> Fireball Eric. The showdown in whatever, Motown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take that those. microphone, shine it up real nice, turn it sideways, and stick that <laughs> microphone straight up your candy ass. <laughs> Listen here, brother. Oh, man. When they used to do yeah. those promos, or they would, or in, when was when did, was WWF on? Sunday mornings or Saturday mornings? Oh, I don't remember. S- uh, Sunday? Probably Saturday, but then it's also on Monday nights, too. So you're probably yeah. thinking of, like, Saturdays. Probably. But when they would have... 
Jim Axlaw Duggan or Andre the Giant, which you could barely understand, but you're just like, yeah, he's so scary. He's so big. Oh my God. He was a literal yeah. giant. Yeah. But he's scary. I thought he was scary. Well, he's a big giant, so he, he had a deep voice, but he was also from France, so it was hard to understand. Yeah. Uh, it just sounded scary. You didn't I really did, know what he was saying. When I was in St. Louis recently, there uh, was a wrestler named Randy Orton. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but uh, he's from St. Louis, so I, I made videos calling him out, like saying he's too much of a coward to come to my show <laughs> to like help promote it. So, yeah. Uh, of course he didn't show because he's too much of a coward. <laughs> uh, but Randy, Or- so. Randy Orton, he's the Viper. That's his nickname. So I was Brent the Mongoose Terhune, the natural enemy of the of the Viper. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And the and uh, uh, Mongoose will fuck up a Viper. I don't know if you've seen those videos on YouTube, but like those are awesome videos just to watch, like. A mongoose fight a snake. I I, like, I'm terrified. Oh, I've of snakes. seen those. Yeah, it's crazy. I you showed me one the other day, Sarge. It was a snake that was in a tree, and a woodpecker was trying to oh, get yeah. at it. And the snake was like strangling it and like biting it. There was it was a hole in a tree, and and you just see the woodpecker like pecking at this hole when the video first starts, and then all of a sudden this big snake pops out of the hole and the bird flaps away and then it comes back and it starts kind of climbing up the tree and starts pecking at this snake and the snake will grab the bird and the bird's flapping around and it's got this bird in the snake's mouth yeah and the bird gets away like three or four times and it keeps coming back and pecking at this snake it was a big bird it was a like a pileated woodpecker like size of maybe a crow or a blackbird and a big snake and a big Uh fucking snake too just like what and then but then this bird where where the bird lived I don't know. I don't know. I wonder if maybe that was. I wonder if he had like eggs in there or something. That snake went in there and was eating probably up his, eating up his. That's why he was so determined because he would sit on the side of the tree after the first time the snake got it, and he kept pecking, and then he was just like looking on the side like all crazy eyed, like I'm waiting for you, you know. And then the snake was like doing his little thing, checking him out too. It was creepy. Yeah, he was not giving up. No, they both He's weren't. Nuts. Yeah, look that shit up. Um. All right, I think it's time to pull this train to the station. What do you think, guys? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> uh, um, Brent, thanks for sharing your time with us tonight, man. This is fun. Yes, thank hey, you. I... It was lovely talking about Gorilla Balls with you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's my first time, so I'm glad it was with you. I know I feel a lot closer to you now. I do, too. Definitely. Having talked about that. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. it's a it's a really it's it's a bonding experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm glad we cleared the air because it was there was a lot of tension until we started Gorilla Ball. Yeah, yeah that really opened it up. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, yeah, it needed to be talked about. It needed to be addressed. So glad it happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thanks again. <laughs> good talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. You too, man. Have a good night. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm-mm-mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Alright then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out.